there is an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded, meaning that when prices increase, quantity demanded falls, but it would be more helpful to decision makers to determine just how much quantity demanded falls when prices increase. Consumers could respond dramatically to a small increase, or they may not change their shopping habits at all. The price elasticity of demand is a measure of how responsive the quantity demanded of a good is to changes in its price. The price elasticity of demand is calculated as the percentage change in the quantity demanded of an item divided by the percentage change in its price. For example, if the price of shampoo decreases by 10%, we know consumers will buy more, but how much more? If the resulting demand for shampoo increases by 15%, then the elasticity would be calculated as 15% divided by 10%, which would give us an elasticity of 1.5. Because of the inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded, the price elasticity of demand will always be less than or equal to zero. Since the price elasticity of demand will always be negative, we want to focus on the size of the value and not the sign. So price elasticities of demand are often reported as an absolute value. One of the issues with elasticities is the direction of change for percentages may skew the results. Moving from $10 to $20 is a 100% increase, but going the other direction is a 50% decrease. Even though the range is the same, the percentage change is significantly different. To correct for this, you'll see elasticities based on the midpoint formula, which averages the percentage change. The midpoint formula calculates the percentage change in a variable by dividing the change in the variable by the average of the initial and final values. Suppose the price of a t-shirt increases from $10 to $15, and this causes the quantity demanded to fall from 4,500 units to 3,500 units. To estimate the elasticity, the percentage changes in these variables must first be calculated. If we use the midpoint formula, the change in each variable is divided by the average of the original and new values. Therefore, the percentage change in price is $5 divided by $12.50, which equals 40%. The percentage change in the quantity demanded is 1,000 shirts divided by 4,000 shirts, which equals 25%. The price elasticity of demand can then be calculated as 25% divided by 40%, which is an elasticity of 0.625. Elasticities can be classified as relatively elastic or inelastic. Elastic demand is when the percentage change in the quantity demanded is larger than the percentage change in the price. Inelastic demand is demand in which the percentage change in the quantity of a good is relatively insensitive to changes in price, which means the percentage change in the price is larger than the percentage change in the quantity demanded. The size of the elasticity value determines whether demand is elastic or inelastic. When the absolute value of the price elasticity of demand is greater than one, it's elastic. When the price elasticity of demand is less than one, it is considered inelastic. When demand is elastic, consumers are highly responsive to changes in price. Small changes in price cause large changes in the quantity demanded. In this situation, the numerator of the equation is larger than the denominator, so price elasticity of demand is greater than one. If the price of oranges decreases by 20% and the quantity demanded increases by 30%, then the demand for oranges is considered elastic. Conversely, when demand is inelastic, consumers are relatively insensitive to changes in price. In this case, the percentage change in price is larger than the percentage change in quantity demanded, so the numerator of the elasticity formula is smaller than the denominator and the value is less than one. A third case occurs when the absolute value of the price elasticity of demand is exactly equal to one. This is known as unit elastic demand. This occurs only when the percentage change in quantity demanded is equal to the percentage change in price. A 10% increase in the price of a product will result in a 10% decrease in the quantity demanded. Economists often focus on five major factors that determine the price elasticity of demand the number of available substitutes, whether the good is a necessity or a luxury, the time frame considered, how broadly the market is defined, and the proportion of a consumer's budget accounted for by the good. 
When the price of a good or service changes, what other options does a consumer have? Are close substitutes readily available? When there are substitutes, consumers will be more sensitive to price changes and demand for the good will be relatively elastic. In contrast, if a good has no close substitutes, such as certain medicines, consumers will be unable to react strongly to price changes and demand for the product will be inelastic. A related consideration is whether the good or service is considered a necessity or a luxury. Consumers are more responsive to price changes of luxury items because they can always choose to not purchase them at all. The demand for luxury goods is often elastic. On the other hand, when the price of necessities increase, consumers try to purchase slightly less of it but cannot reduce their consumption by much because they need to purchase the good. This makes demand for necessities relatively inelastic. What about the time from the initial price change? If prices of gasoline increase overnight, many consumers already have plans the following day to drive to work or to school, and it's not easy to adjust those plans quickly. However, if the price of gasoline remains high, people may start looking for alternative transportation, carpool with others, or find ways to reduce their commuting time. Given enough time, people will find suitable substitutes, which means in the long run, demand will be more elastic than in the short run. The fourth determinant of price elasticity of demand is how broadly the market is defined. The broader the definition of the market, the less elastic demand will be because there are more substitutes. For example, the demand for ice cream in general is less elastic than the demand for a particular brand of ice cream because many different brands of ice cream are available and consumers will respond more to a change in the price of a specific brand than they would to an overall change in the price of ice cream. The fifth factor is the proportion of consumers' budgets that are accounted for by the good. A 1% decrease in the price of a car will have a much larger impact on a consumer than a 1% decrease in the price of paper towels. Although both may be important to consumers, the demand for cars will be more responsive and therefore more elastic. In some markets, consumers have an infinite possibility of comparable products to purchase. This idea reflects a perfectly elastic demand in which any increase in price will cause demand to fall to zero and the elasticity then is equal to infinity. In this example, consumers respond to any price increase by no longer purchasing the good. When demand is perfectly elastic, the demand curve is horizontal. Perfectly elastic demand occurs when a large number of identical substitutes are available in a market. If one seller raises the price of their product, consumers can simply switch to an identical version of the good from a different seller, and the quantity demanded from the first seller falls to zero. Perfectly inelastic demand, on the other hand, occurs when demand does not change at all to price changes. The price elasticity of demand is equal to zero, and the demand curve for the good is vertical. For perfectly inelastic demand to occur, the good or service must be a necessity and have no close substitutes. As an example, consumers do not purchase more dental cavity fillings if the prices fall or forego treatment if the prices rise.